Graphing an equation in the form y equals a cosine bx, where a is any non-zero value and b is any positive real number, is fairly easy if you have a good understanding of the properties of the graph of y equals cosine of x. In this video, I will graph three equations that have the form y equals a times the cosine of bx. This process can be used to graph any equation having this form. Let's begin by talking about the graph of y equals the cosine of x. This graph can be described as a wave, and it repeats itself infinitely to the left and to the right. And what is repeating itself, what repeats itself from the left to right, is a curve that begins above the x-axis, crosses the x-axis one-fourth of the way through one cycle of the curve, gets to its low point halfway through one cycle of the curve, goes back up to the x-axis three-fourths of the way through the curve, and returns to its highest point at the end of one cycle of the graph. This pattern is the way that the graph will look for any equation of the form y equals a cosine of bx, but the value of a and the value of b will change its shape slightly. It will still, it will still be a curve, a cyclical curve in nature that begins at the top of its amplitude, travels to the bottom halfway through, and returns to the top at the end. But the value of a and b will slightly change how high and low the graph goes, and how long it takes, how many units on the x-axis it takes to complete each cycle. Again, I'll describe this process as I complete three examples. Let's begin. The first example will be y equals 3 times the cosine of 2x. I have in the corner of the screen the graph of y equals the cosine of x because, again, any equation in the form y equals a times the cosine of bx is based on the graph of y equals cosine of x. First, we'll talk about how the value of a will affect this graph. The value of a corresponds with the graph's amplitude, and the amplitude is the absolute value of that number that's in front of the cosine. In this case, the amplitude is the absolute value of 3, which is, of course, 3. Amplitude can be thought of as the height of the wave, or how high or low, how many units above and below the middle of the graph that the wave will rise and fall. In this case, I'm going to be graphing a cosine that is that its highest point is three units above its middle, and its lowest point is three units below its vertical middle. The value of B is associated with the fundamental period of the wave. The fundamental period is how many units on the x-axis it takes to complete one cycle of the wave. There's a formula for fundamental period. When you're talking about trig functions measured in radians, where the value of x, the angle x, is measured in radians, and that formula is 2 pi over b. So in this case, the value of b is 2, so that means that the fundamental period is 2 pi over 2, or just pi radians. And what this means is that the shape of the graph of y equals cosine of x will be completed, that shape, that cycle, will be completed after pi radians along the x-axis. Let's draw the graph. Again, this graph will have the same shape, the same general shape as the shape of y equals the cosine of x, but it has a different amplitude and a different fundamental period. The graph of y equals cosine of x began one unit above the x-axis and ended one unit above the x-axis. In this graph, y equals 3 cosine of 2x, the amplitude is 3. So this curve will begin three units above the x-axis and it will end, one cycle of the graph, will end three units above the x-axis as well. However, that's one cycle of this graph is going to end after pi radians, because the fundamental period is pi. One cycle of the graph will end after pi radians, 
So what I'm doing here is I'm putting a dot to represent this curve, this wave ending, one cycle of the wave ending, after pi radians. Remember, in the graph of a cosine wave, halfway through the beginning and end of one cycle, it gets to its lowest point. In y equals 3 cosine of 2x, one cycle will be completed after pi radians, so halfway through the graph will be, will be at pi over 2 radians. So halfway through this wave, it will be at its lowest point, which because the amplitude is 3, will be 3 units below the x-axis right here. The curve will cross the x-axis one-fourth of the way through one cycle, and again three-fourths of the way through one cycle. So in this curve, I'm putting a dot on the x-axis a fourth of the way through the fundamental period, a fourth of the way between zero and pi units on the x-axis. It's not labeled on this graph, but that would be pi over four. And it will cross the x-axis again three-fourths of the way through one cycle. Because one cycle is completed after pi radians, this would be at 3 pi over 4 units on the x-axis. I now have five points on this coordinate plane, and I'm going to join those with a curve. And once I complete this curve, you can see that it, it has the same shape as the graph of y equals the cosine of x. It doesn't quite look the same because the amplitude and period change the way it looks somewhat. But it does begin at the top of an amplitude, travel down to the bottom, halfway through one cycle of the curve, and then back up to the top. This is the way the graph of 3 cosine 2x looks like from 0 to pi. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this graph to fill up the coordinate plane that I've been given. This shape will repeat itself every pi radians. So on the coordinate plane I've been given, I see that I can go over to 2 pi. And that cycle of the graph will again end three units above the x-axis. Halfway through the cycle, it will be down three units below the x-axis or traveling back up three units above the x-axis after 2 pi, another cycle of the graph is completed after pi radians. If, I, if this coordinate plane on the x-axis continued to 3 pi, I would be able to draw another complete cycle. But as it is, I only see um, the x-axis going over to 5 pi over 2, another half cycle of the graph. And halfway through the cycle, it's at its lowest point. So I'm only able to draw that much of another cycle of the curve. And likewise, to the left, I, I do not see negative 1 pi on this x-axis. It only goes over to negative 1 half pi, which is halfway through the cycle of the curve. So it will go down three units below the x-axis before turning around and heading back up. This is the graph of y equals 3 cosine 2x. Let's try to graph y equals 2 cosine 1 half x. This process will be the same process that I used in the first example. First, I'll identify the amplitude. Very straightforward. The amplitude comes from the value of a. The absolute value of 2 is 2. The fundamental period comes from the value of b, which in this case is 1 half. 2 pi over b would be 2 pi over 1 half. And when you divide by a fraction, 2 pi divided by 1 half is another way to read this statement aloud. When you divide by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. And the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So 2 pi divided by 1 half is the same thing as 2 pi times 2, which is 4 pi. So that means in this graph, to complete one cycle of the graph, it's going to take four pi units along the x-axis. The coordinate plane that I've been given has a lot more units along the x-axis to accommodate for that. It's going to take four pi radians 
to draw one cycle of the graph of this cosine wave. The amplitude is 2, so I'll begin two units above the x-axis. And because the fundamental, the fundamental period is 4 pi, one cycle of this graph will end two units above 4 pi radians. It will get to its lowest point halfway through its fundamental period. Halfway between 0 and 4 pi is 2 pi. So below 2 pi, two units below 2 pi because the amplitude is 2, it will reach its lowest point. A fourth of the way through the graph, it will cross the x-axis. And a fourth of the way from 0 to 4 pi is 1 pi. Three fourths of the way through the, the uh, one cycle of the curve. We'll cross the x-axis again, and 3 fourths of the way between 0 and 4 pi is 3 pi. And I now have enough information to join these four points, five points, with as smooth of a cosine wave as I can. And you can now see on the screen one cycle of the graph of y equals 2 cosine 1 half x. This has taken up the majority of the coordinate plane that I've been given but I will continue the curve to fill up as much space as I possibly can on the coordinate plane that I've been given. But from negative pi to positive 5 pi, this is what the graph of y equals 2 cosine of 1 half x looks like. For our final example, we'll take a look at the graph of y equals negative 3 cosine of x. This is the only example of the three we've talked about that has a negative value for a. Like all functions with a negative coefficient, it results in a rotation around the x-axis. Basically, you can think of it as flipping the graph upside down. The graph of y equals negative cosine of x, instead of beginning above the x-axis, begins below the x-axis. And instead of falling to the x-axis, it rises to the x-axis. And halfway through the graph, halfway through one cycle of the graph of y equals negative cosine x, it will be at the top of its amplitude instead of the bottom. And then it will travel down to reach the x-axis three-fourths of the way through one cycle of the curve. And one cycle will end at the bottom of its amplitude. So the blue curve that you see on the screen is the graph of y equals negative cosine of x. And that's going to be the general shape that y equals negative 3 cosine of x will have as well. The amplitude is the absolute value of a. So in this case, that's the absolute value of negative 3 or just 3. An amplitude is always positive. You can think of an amplitude as the height of the wave or how big the wave is. And that's a positive number. The fundamental period in this cosine wave, well, 2 pi over b is the formula, and the value of b here is 1. It's not written, but it's understood to be a 1. And so the fundamental period of this curve will be 2 pi. It will take 2 pi radians along the x-axis to complete one cycle of the curve, which again will look something like the blue wave that I have drawn in the top left corner of the screen. Let's draw this graph. Because there's a negative coefficient, this will begin, one cycle of the curve will begin three units below the x-axis. And one cycle of the curve will end at its fundamental period, 2 pi, three units below the x-axis. Halfway through one cycle, it will be at the top of its amplitude. Halfway between 0 and 2 pi is 1 pi. And so this curve will be at the top of its amplitude, three units above the x-axis. It will cross the x-axis a fourth of the way through one cycle, and again, three-fourths of the way through one cycle. Joining these five points with a smooth curve to form one cycle of the wave looks like this. On the screen is one cycle of the graph of y equals negative 3 cosine of 1x. This is the general shape that every cosine curve will have when there's a negative value for a. I'll continue 
this curve to fill up the coordinate plane that I've been given. Here is the graph of y equals negative 3 cosine x.